I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. I'm JT, and that's Patrick. This is Patrick. Patrick. We need a little nameplate for him. Yeah, now he needs a nameplate. Yeah, so uh, we are here today with a ghost mail. Woo. Ghost mail. You've got ghost mail. But before we did we, get ghost mail. We did. We did get ghost Lots mail. Lots of it. Yes. Um, so before we get into that, we do have a few announcements. Uh, first off, our radio play. Um, so if you are not a pair of junkie, you have not heard the pilot episode yet. Um, but that's okay because that will be going live for y'all on October 6th. So yes. it's going to be the pilot episode of Beneath the Cobblestones. The pair of junkies have had it for a while. Um, so if you're feeling impatient and you want to see it now, you can go ahead and check it out. Or on- listen to it now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, listen to it now. It doesn't have visuals because it's a radio play. Radio Um, play. But yes, so you can listen to that on Patreon if you are wanting it before October 6th. We have gotten a lot of love on Patreon uh, for it. So I'm really excited. You know, I'm currently like writing episode three now. Yeah. So it's just like, I mean, we are we are busting it wide open. Exactly. Yes. Um, and Para Junkies are going to be getting uh, episode two on October 8th. So yes, no, the week of the October week of, 8th. of October eighth. Yes, 8th. yes. So. that date will be more solidified as we get a little bit closer. But I just want to make it. We're filming this Sunday, so I just want to. Or if you're hearing this now, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So um. Definitely become a pair of junkie for that. Also. We have uh, decided that if we hit, what is it, 140, 140. Para, 140, 140 para junkies, junkies, we will go to Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, so that is only 16 para junkies away. Yeah. That's um, so not if you are. Not. If, uh, right, it's not a lot, really, in the scheme of things. So uh, if you are on the edge of wanting to become a para junkie, you should consider doing it so that we mm-hmm. will go over to Kentucky and do that as a live investigation. Yes. And we will make sure that we have it all to ourselves. All yes. to ourselves. We, are, we, will literally, we will literally book out the sanatorium. Yes. Like, like book it out. It'll be just us. Um, and we get eight hours. Mm-hmm. It's from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's awesome. And, that's amazing. Uh, that's awful. I cannot stay awake. I am going to have to load myself up with caffeine or something. Bring your little sleeping I am an bag. old man. We will, um, we will be using JT as a, as a ghost finding tool. Yes. yes. If he wakes up. Mm-hmm. There's a ghost present. Exactly. Yes. Uh, well, Otherwise, he, he'll just sleep. Exactly. Um, and we'll be like, touch JT, scratch JT. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah, become a para junkie. One because it's really awesome, but also to s- get us to go to Waverly Hills. Yes. But, um, also, for the month of October, every single Tuesday, Chris and I are going to be doing Tuesday Terrors, and Boo. it's also going to have Eni there. Yes. Um, so that's pretty awesome. We'll be telling ghost stories, doing ghost hunt uh, demonstrations, uh, Q&A, and there'll be pizza. Yep, we will be eating pizza with y'all. Um, mm-hmm. And on Halloween night, there is going to be a pizza party, costume contest, uh, trivia, trivia. All the fun things, and it's late enough in the the evening where you feel spooky. You obviously it's a, on a Tuesday, so you know right. people have work and stuff. But haunted Halloween, yes. But you get to start to feel spooky, and if you want to go out late at night um, afterwards, you, we won't keep you long enough where right. you wouldn't be able yes. to do that. So yes. um, it's pretty awesome, and it's going to be at King Oliver's uh, over off of MLK here in downtown Savannah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll have a link for y'all so that if you want to buy tickets, you can. It's going to be $25, and that does get you two pieces of pizza as well as getting to see our lovely f- faces. So, anywho, into the ghost mail. Into the ghost mail. All righty. Starting off with um, a ghost mail from John. 
uh, with the subject, ghost mail in all caps. Whoa. Very intense ghost mail. I'm about it. So, hi guys. Uh, I've been listening to the podcast since the beginning. Thank you very much, John, for yeah, listening. Yeah, seriously. Thank you so much for that. Um, and what other pair junkies say about heightened levels of paranormal activity while listening to y'all is very much true. Ooh. Very. I love to hear that. I That's very fun. Do. Um. I am a newly uncovered medium, and after months of therapy, I have been able to uncover my abilities, which were locked away long ago from experiences. <laughs> the story begins two weeks ago. Um, so this would have been uh, July 12th through the 14th of this year, while on vacation to the Catskills, mm. while staying at a new build hotel in Poughkeepsie. I had a terrible travel experience getting to my destination and only spent 48 hours in Poughkeepsie. This is all the time I needed to discover the level of my residual of residual energy, which made my skin crawl and required a light on it all uh, a light on at all times. I didn't even walk into the room before I felt the energy as if I were walking through a tangible fog springy and somehow alive upon entering the room. There were several residual scenes playing out at once, which made the experience even more confusing. I saw both good and bad, happy and sad and evil and abuse Four scenes played out one of a couple on a honeymoon, one of a businessman and a lady. If you catch my drift, um, an abusive boyfriend sprinting towards the bed, ready to attack and uh, over and over. And then her scream perpetually ringing in my ears. Wow. Then okay. there was a man in despair with his head in ha his hands looking out the window. All these scenes playing at once. It made me queasy. As I was getting ready for bed, I felt another presence. This was far older than what I saw previously playing out. It was a Native American connected to the land, actively watching the tableau unfold. His arms were crossed with his chin in his hands and his vibrant war paint, a stark contrast to the gray walls, red, yellow, and blue in the manner of, wartime, of a wartime shaman, complete with the feathers. He placed the hall, he paced the hallway repeatedly until he turned to look at me. Um, there were, was a mutual acknowledgement and he told me a date 1783. Mm. It has been several weeks since the encounter and I have an idea of its meeting meaning. However, nothing's concrete. The two nights I stayed there, he never left the hallway watching me with a perplexed look. He was huge, y'all. Like he took up most of the hallway, easily 6'4". Wow. I had to sleep with the light on in the bathroom. Honestly, I was so relieved to deuce out of that place. <laughs> um, it was the most active place I've stayed thus far, often uh, other than Williamsburg. But that's a story for another time. Thank you for reading the Odyssey. Um, this odyssey and for giving us an outlet to be heard and understood sincerely john oh thanks john appreciate that so it's interesting that you um talk about that you have recently uncovered that you have these abilities because of the fact that um it's very true and we've i've br briefly mentioned this i think in the past of most people have some level of ability um but usually after childhood or you know traumatic experiences or life in general people will start to put on what I like to call the armor of having to be an adult, like able to function in life in general. Um, so usually that sensitivity just gets smothered. Um, so it's interesting to hear that once you kind of have worked through the trauma that you've been through, um, that your abilities came back. Um, and so intensely too. And I would love if you uh, are willing to share what the name of the hotel is i'm quite interested to hear a bit more uh, poughkeepsie is what pennsylvania or is that uh, that's no, new york new york new york there's okay. catskills yes what you're saying okay yeah and so yeah, new york um and so that's actually quite compelling as well because um, New York in general, I mean, obviously, once you get closer to Canada and all of those regions, you get a lot of Native American um, stories and things like that that come about. So it's compelling that you bring up that you had that experience, but also uh, that it seemed like he almost was witnessing everything you were witnessing, which is 
quite interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> as cliche as it is, there's a reason why so many ghost stories are, you know, on top of ancient native burial grounds. The concept of there being land that was set aside for sacred and spiritual purposes, set aside for its sacred and spiritual power and potency. It's very possible that the hotel itself is sitting on a place that resonates and holds spirits in place, allows them to be present. You know, the idea of choosing by energy where to place your dead so that they can communicate back with us, so that they can have the reverence and connectivity to the nature and us. So, you know, it's very likely that the significance of the location of the hotel uh, is allowing for the past to just be visible, you know, overlapping. So you're, you're, you're seeing countless encounters right on a fault line that allows you to witness basically time. You know, um, time as a construct separates all things from happening, but when you collapse time on top of itself, then all things are happening simultaneously. So I think that you probably very likely were in a, a type of vortex created on on a spiritually potent plot of land. Mm -hmm. And it's also just like those um, scenes that you were getting isn't uh, uncommon for a hotel. You know, it's um, it makes sense that they all seem to revolve around things that would happen in a hotel. And unfortunately, a lot of illegal things happen in hotels. Or just heightened and emotional things, exactly. too. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, because it's not your home. And so uh, people feel like they can do things there that they wouldn't normally do at home because then they leave that place and they can forget about it or, you know, or things it like that. It, it memorialized in their mind. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so just an interesting um, overall experience that you had. And, um, and you know, all, all hotels probably have a degree of, of, of this, right. You know, all hotels contain that energy, that specific, strange transient energy, these little pockets of a person's life that, you know, uh, only for a day, only for a night, you know, uh, these, these, um, rhythmic heartbeats of all these lives coming through. So I think that you do stand to, to, to have strange encounters in hotels. I would agree. But uh, thank you so much, John, for yeah. sending that in. Um, and thank you for listening for yes. since the beginning. Right, for so long. That's so awesome. Um, so this next one comes from, um, let me just make sure that they included their name. Okay, they did not. So let me, so we'll just say um, this listener. Uh, sent in a story with the subject, my story with, rece with receipts, lest you think me insane. <laughs> 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 so, good evening. I've been wanting to write to you for so long about so many things, but I figured I'd give you this one that was left uh, that has left me scratching my head hmm. and also questioning my mental health in hopes of you being able to give me some feedback to help me work through it. Before I do that, I want to sum up who I am. Hi, I am um, anxiety personified. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it has a lot to do with all the things I've experienced in my life that I believe to be paranormal. I grew up in the suburbs of New Orleans. That makes sense that you'd have a lot of experiences. Uh, in a home that was always a little um, off. To this day, I cannot sleep with any open doors in my bedroom, and my TV must be on throughout the night. When I was a young adult, my next-door neighbors moved out, and a family moved in. I ended up working at a nursing home with the woman of um, the house, and we became friendly acquaintances. One day, I got up the nerve to ask her why she had little mirrors all over her outside doors and windows, and she hesitantly told me that she was instructed to do so in order to keep the negative energy away yeah. uh, from her house. I laughed and asked where negative energy was coming from, and she said, your house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it went from funny to horrifying in a matter of moments. 
it's worth mentioning that I think myself, my mother, and my grandmother are maybe a little intuitive, for lack of a better word. My dad would always joke saying, I don't care if the sun is shining and there isn't a cloud in the sky. Uh, If your mother tells you to grab an umbrella, I suggest you listen. It's nothing as grand as winning lottery numbers or um, death dates. It's more like saying something random out loud and someone saying, get out of my head. I was just thinking that. Or reaching out to a friend or family member and them saying, wow, I was getting ready to call you. Or sometimes even, I wonder what Mr. Jones has been up to. And two minutes later, Mr. Jones is right in front of you. The worst of it being the chest pressing um, uh, bad feelings. Nothing spectacular, but occurring a little too often to ignore. So now it's story time. Real fast. This yep. is actually Melissa's story. She um, She's on the live stream right oh, now. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she yeah. Goes, That's me. <laughs> oh, very nice. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Melissa. I just didn't know if you wanted me to say your name or not. So, um, all righty. So, before history is written, it's played. Before it's frozen in time, it's fought one shift at a time. Before it's etched in silver, it's carved in ice. What happens next will last forever. The Stanley Cup Final on ABC and ESPN Plus begins Saturday. So now it's story time. I just want to say now it's super weird. Um, It is taking all my bravery to even send it, but I've held on to it for far too long. In 2002, when I was 21 years old, my dad died. Uh, Even writing that sentence feels like a punch to the gut, and I've lived without him longer than I've lived with him. It is important to know that it was sudden. It was due to medical malpractice, and he was only 47 years old. I'm so sorry to hear that, Melissa. Wow. And I have been unable to deal with it even after all these years. I've held on to so much anger for how he was taken away from us that the unfortunate byproduct has been um, the absence of him from my life. Uh, If I don't deal, I don't feel, and that has been my toxic relationship with the situation. I met a woman years later when I was teaching cosmetology school who became one of my students. She took uh, one look at me and told me I was a bruja, and we've had a beautiful relation ever since. (laughs) (laughs) Fast forward again uh, to some time later, I receive a text from her um, asking me if I'm sitting down. She proceeds to tell me that my dad came to her and he wants me to let go of the anger I feel for the people I believe are responsible for his death. Wow. Mind you, I've never spoken to her about what happened to my dad. I'll attach the screenshots of the text, but I'm still not to the real story. Just building up to it. I ended up calling her and she tells me that my dad would like me to put pictures of him up in my house. Again, something she knows nothing about, partly because she has no um, idea that Hurricane Katrina destroyed nearly every picture, but also that I can't bring myself to look at him every day. So now it is uh, time to fast forward to May 26, 2021. All I hear about on TikTok for days leading up to this day is the blood moon slash lunar eclipse. (laughs) I uh, had to go look it up because I couldn't remember exactly what it was. The night of May 25th, I decided to start collecting some uh, pictures of my dad to finally print and put around my house. That's important, too. So the morning of May 26th, I am an early riser, and it just so happened I had some work to do So before I got um, to do before I got to work. Um, I decided to go take a look outside and see if I could see this fancy moon uh, show. But unfortunately, too many clouds, too many trees. On my way to my kitchen table, I stepped on some glass and started bleeding all over the kitchen. Since I was the only one awake, I snapped a picture to later show my kids. While I surely would be shaking my fists at them for not cleaning up whatever they broke the night before, I wiped up my blood and... um, 
started working mindlessly with my hands. Not too far into it, I started giggling to myself about how I made a blood sacrifice to the blood moon, and I didn't even get anything. (laughs) (laughs) Something shifted in me that I can't explain. I can't say I heard a voice. It was more like I um, say out loud, or... Uh, but I also knowing I am alone, all alone, and no one can hear my thoughts, I think I want to talk to my dad. Um, again, feeling really foolish, I say out loud, hi, dad, and then I just sat with my silliness for a good uh, minute or so. I felt so stupid till another thought that wasn't uh, mine said, music. So I said out loud, hey, Siri, play some music. Don't actually do that, Siri. um and she did the first song that played was a song i've never heard and honestly i will probably never seek out again but the song name and the album name shook me to my core i'll attach screenshots the name of the song is don't be so hard on yourself Mm. and the name of the album is it's good to hear your voice wow As if that weren't wild enough, the next song was one I've heard before. One of the hardest songs for me to listen to, David Bowie's Lazarus. The first line of the song is, look up here, I'm in heaven. I am not a religious person, but I am a spiritual one, I suppose. So I guess do with that what you will. I only allowed myself to one more song, and it was by one of my dad's favorite bands, Chicago. If you leave me now, uh, which to me felt like a proper time to tell whatever this event slash coincidence slash insanity goodbye, I don't know how to unpack any of it. Even now, I'm trying to decide if I should hit send or delete the whole thing. I am glad I saved all the photos from my old phone onto my laptop so I could screenshot and send you the time-stamped pictures so that you can see at the very least see that I didn't make it all up. We don't usually believe people make these things up. This is a very uh, For sure. nuanced story. So well, we believe you. Trust me. Um, I've only told two people this story, and I haven't even told my husband. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and thank you so much for taking the time to read through all this. I love you all so much. Please don't judge my dirty floor, dirty feet. It was like two years ago, and I've grown as a person since then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... We will go ahead and look through all of the um, screenshots. Yep, yep. I'm I'm, uh, showing everybody the screenshots right now. Oh, actually, if you could pull those up for us, Jay, that would make it a lot easier. So that's so real fast. So these are all the these are the text messages right Mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And we have more right there. I figure viewers can. Um, uh, pause it and take a look on YouTube. Um, so all the photos. And yep, then- yep. And then we have there's the bloody, f- uh, there's the bloody floor, and the dad. Um, yep, yep, yep. And there it is. That's so crazy. Yep. And it's time stamped. Wow. Yep. So Honestly, anyway. that's crazy, Melissa. That you your first thought was to take screenshots because I would be so like lost in emotion. uh, Exactly. Um, But thank you for doing that because that's even cooler. You know, obviously we'd still believe your story even if you didn't have the screenshots, but um, yeah, I can understand why that's a lot for you to unpack because I mean, everybody grieves in their own way and it's can be very tricky for people to have, to go through grieving. Um, But it sounded like your dad was picking up on that. And um, he was almost like, you need to not, you know, harbor that emotion um, to let yourself or allow yourself to move on. Uh, Because you hear that sometimes with people, have a really tough time with their grieving process that loved ones will come through to say it's okay to move on because especially when it's a parent or somebody you're very close with you can go through life being like I am not allowed to stop grieving yeah because you feel like almost um, if you stop then it wasn't like they were important to you but that's not the case 
Um, she said, I had to hit pause with the music. I was shook. Then the thought for screenshots came second. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy still, you know, that, um, th- that he communicated through music, which, um, was your, well, since Melissa's here, we can ask questions. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> Yeah, was your dad a big like music lover, and that's kind of just the way that he showed his um, his love, or is that you know is music like a big deal in your life, perhaps? Mm-hmm. Um, because I just I think that's like the first time I've heard somebody say that they had um, song lyrics convey yeah. the message, yeah. which is really I've, I, I've compelling. heard that before. I mean, and and technically, it is kind of like a giant spirit box when yeah, when it comes down right. to it. You know, um, being able to randomize songs so that the uh, the titles or the lyrics are, are coming through. It's fascinating, and and we'll start with um, the sensation of you're going to think I'm crazy, or I can't tell anyone because they'll think I'm crazy. Is the hallmark of a paranormal. Uh, encounter. Mm-hmm. Um, most people, uh, I know I spent most of my life trying to make sure the people that I share with are people who can accept it uh, because some stories are just utterly unbelievable and some stories are just so over the top. And so, you know, and so we try our best to be this safe place where people can express these stories and, and, and not, and not be faced with that kind of judgment. Uh, but one of the things that I think is so significant and, and for anybody who's listening, um, grief is everyone's personal journey, but when somebody we really, truly love is taken from us, the anger is very immediate and very easy to hold on to, And it is uh, probably what seems like the paramount thing, but the problem is the memory of the person is now linked to anger and missing the person is now linked with anger. And that is a, that's a, that's a burden to both you and the memory of the person you love. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trying to understand that there's a separation between the sensations of anger, because a lot of people, they use the term. I am angry. They'll say, I am angry. I am angry, but the truth of it is you feel angry. It's not what you are. And you have to come to a place where the realization is I feel angry, which means you're reacting to something. And the thing you're reacting to is actually at the source of a lot of the emotion. The anger you feel is oftentimes, or the sadness or or anything, is the reflection of the love you feel. So while you can feel angry, you should also say, I am love. Rather than saying, I am angry, I am love, and I'm angry about losing it. Hmm. Um, because you, you, you put the best parts of, of experience into the box of the emotion. You, know, you put it into that box, and it's like, wouldn't you rather have it in a box of love than a box of anger? Yeah. Um, because the anger is justified and because the anger deserves to be felt, but it doesn't deserve to be the anchor for a life that, that you want to celebrate, you know, uh, celebrate the people you love, uh, celebrate them while they're alive. Uh, and, and certainly when they're gone, celebrate them and, and try to keep those sensations, you know, know that grief is a response and, and, Nobody can tell you to stop grieving. <laughs> Nobody can right. tell you when it's appropriate or when it's anything like that. Because um, I think even the message of, of, of your father from beyond isn't stop feeling angry you know, yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. or stop grieving. It's celebrate. Mm-hmm. Celebrate the, the, the things that you love because those are the things that keep us connected. Yep. Yeah. And also, um, there are ways that you can feel connected to your past loved ones, even after they're gone. Um, you know, like even yesterday, well, 
yesterday when we're filming this, not yesterday when you're listening to this, um, was the autumn equinox. And so I decided yesterday to do a tarot reading with my ancestors. And so uh, some ways that I like to feel connected is that I had my coffee and then I poured coffee for them as well. So, it, you know, it feels like we're having coffee together and we're discussing you know, so it's things like that that you can do that make you feel connected to the people that matter to you in life. Um, after they're gone, you can invoke them, you know, you can leave out, uh, you see it a lot, you know, with, with Samhain, um, you know, Halloween and things like that. People leave out a plate for their loved ones, their ancestors, whoever it is, they'll leave a plate for them so that it's, they're joining them in the festivities or you'll see it on Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever holiday that you want, but it doesn't have to be on a holiday either. You can simply do like what I just said, which is you can pour coffee into a bowl or a cup and place it on uh, a special place for them next to their photo and say like, Hey, just want to sit down with you. Maybe we can listen to this song that reminds me of you. Um, Um, yeah. it's it's things like that that you can do to kind of soften the blow because I mean it'll never fully go away but um if anything it shows that he's clearly still with you and he is still wanting to connect with you as I'm, I'm sure you know already so yeah um but a really beautiful she, experience she answered your question um <clears throat> so she actually said uh both um to your music question i still can't listen to certain songs because of him uh the wildest part was that the thoughts that uh the wildest part was that thoughts that weren't my thoughts were prompting me to do those things mm -hmm. and uh she also she said i also had to stay at the hospital he died in because i punched a wall and broke my hand the doctor who treated me same doctor responsible i had no idea till after mm -hmm. uh and then to to you chris she said i'd much rather have a box of love no yeah. yeah. and you know it's it's such a there's no prescription for it except to say that a lot of people will do this a lot of people and and they'll do it to people who are alive <laughs> they'll do it to yeah. to uh they will they will cut things out of their life because of the pain and somewhere along the way the pain of not having them in your life is greater than the pain of facing the loss. And, and it may be that you, you hit that point where, where the measurement was, was so out of whack that the avoidance of all the celebratory sensations was, was actually a deficit for the amount of pain you've embraced. Um, and I, again, this is not like a prescription or anything. It, it's just a suggestion that um, that honoring and remembering and being involved with the best parts of your memory uh, are not exclusive. You know, it's not either or. Um, you, you sometimes have to have the pain, but it's kind of worth it if mm -hmm. you still have the love, if you still have, you know, the 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 good feelings to temper it with okay mm -hmm. all right thank you so much melissa yeah. honestly appreciate super it cool story yeah very very cool and um, i believe we have time for one mo all righty so let's see if this person okay this one is from sarah um and the subject reads a couple of stories so they said, hi, Madison, Chris, and JT. I absolutely love your podcast. I found you shortly after you began your journey and have loved following along. So thank you, Sarah. Yeah, it's been thank a, you so much. It's been an episode of very early on listeners. So that's pretty <laughs> yeah, cool. That is cool. Um, but I am always, I, I've always been sensitive, so is my mom, and my interactions with spirits have largely been positive. I have so many stories that I will share a couple and send another note at some point. Please so, do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Story one. My husband and I bought our first home shortly after we were married. The owners before us were an elderly couple where the man had passed about three years prior and his wife about a year prior to our purchase of the home. The house had good vibes when we walked through it, and my mom, who is also a bit sensitive, walked through it in, with us and got the same positive feelings. 
I always had the, say, the sense that the previous male owner had died at home, specifically in the primary bedroom that we utilized as our own. I always had the lingering feeling that we were never alone in the home, not in a creepy way, more like a grandparent way. <laughs> and the home felt like his home, not ours. Um, as we settled in, we renovated the kitchen and bathrooms to our style and removed wallpaper and painted. The home would periodically smell like Italian spices, specifically garlic and almost always in the evenings. Mm. I pointed it out to my husband who humors me, but almost always brushes me off, um, brushes off my experiences. He's tr a true skeptic. He didn't really notice the smell. For the four years we lived in the home, at least a couple nights a week, I'd smell garlic, and I was never cooking with garlic at those times. About a year and a half after we purchased the home, after our small renovations were complete, something even my husband cannot deny happened. I came home from work about two weeks before Christmas, and my husband was traveling, and there was an 8x10 rug that had been delivered to our home. I hadn't purchased a rug, but we had talked about potentially putting a rug in the basement where our couches and TV were located. When I saw the rug, I thought, that's strange, but I assumed it had simply been delivered to the wrong house, and that one of our neighbors would surely ring the doorbell and inquire about the rug that had been on the porch. It had been a few days that I'd left um, it that I'd left it there since I couldn't lift it in myself. Um, when my husband came home from his trip, he went to move the rug, looked at the shipping label to ensure that it wasn't a neighbor's, and to his shock, it was addressed to our home and to the previous homeowner, Robert, oh. who had died four years prior in his nineties. We assumed that curious, a very. We assumed that a family member had purchased it and accidentally shipped it to our home. We placed it in the garage, left, let a few weeks go by, and hadn't heard anything. At that point, we decided to open it. We were floored to discover that the rug matched our design aesthetic and space in the basement perfectly. At that point, we came to the conclusion that Robert bought us this rug for the basement. <laughs> We've since moved and taken the rug with us, but we don't think Robert came with us as well. I don't feel him with us anymore, so I like to think he stayed in his home. So that's story number one. Nice. Which, <laughs> honestly, I wish my ghost would buy me a rug. That would be I nice, know. right? Well, <laughs> but Seriously. But interesting, though, um, and I hope that maybe, you know, your husband uh, opened his mind a little bit to the paranormal after that experience. At the very least, phantom shoppers. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, story number two, this is an oldie. About 20 years ago, my mom helped coach my cheerleading squad. One night, she was r driving me and two friends home from practice because we all lived in the same neighborhood. It was dark outside. I think in the late fall, after daylight savings time had ended because it was right around dinner time. We had dropped one friend off already, and we were turning left onto the street of another friend uh, we were dropping off when my mom slammed on the brakes out of nowhere. Right in front of us, there was a man dressed in running clothes who slammed his fists onto the hood of our car. Whoa. It looked as though he had narrowly avoided, we had narrowly avoided hitting him. My mom gasped and said, I never saw him. He wasn't there. It was dark, so I assumed she had missed him or that he was in our, her blind spot until he ran away. And about 15 feet, he completely disappeared into Ooh. thin air. Mm. I'm still hmm. friends with the girl we were dropping off, and we all saw the same thing. And to this day, we can all recount the same exact story. We looked up if someone was uh, hit at that intersection, and we couldn't find anything. But the location is at the corner of a church and a few blocks away from three different cemeteries. We assumed he was a victim of an accident that happened while he was running, and my mom has always said that it was a message to her to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen him running again until maybe a few months ago. Oh, what? Oh, uh, this is a turn of the yeah. uh, twist. <laughs> we live in the same neighborhood that I grew up in, and my mom and I walk early in the mornings. A few months ago, I saw a shadow running down our street as we walked down it at the end of our walk. As it passed, I turned around and looked for it, and it was gone. I had this feeling that it was the same man, perhaps further in his spirit journey as he was not as formed as he once was 20 years ago. Would love to hear your thoughts on this one. Thanks for reading, Sarah. Wow. 
that's crazy. That was, that was that's wild. Super crazy. And, and yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think that uh, this was a spirit that you know was probably relatively new right. when you first encountered it, and now over time, especially since there doesn't seem to be anything marking his existence, you know, that he died in a car wreck or that he had these things. Uh, so there's no one to recognize him or, or, or enforce, you know, his, his, his story so that he can maintain his, uh, his appearance. No, that's, that's pretty impressive. And, uh, and so, yeah, somewhere between uh, a ghost who buys you rugs and the, uh, the ghost that reminds you to drive safely, uh, you, you're, you're, you're batting a hundred for, um, <laughs> yeah, for being sensitive. Um, <laughs> and it sounds like your mom probably is right. You know, I'm sure if you die by getting hit by a car and you see a car speeding, you would be, um, you know, the enforcer of that policy if it's on your sure, corner, absolutely. you know. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised other people might have not had that same experience if that's yeah, the case. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's interesting because it does kind of fall into um, Hitchhiker Ghost kind of stories. Um, those encounters where you have it right on the road and, you know, you see it and then when you mm -hmm. turn to look, it's gone. Um, so roadside ghosts are very uh, common all around the, the world, really. Uh, people um, oftentimes, you know, driving over bridges, they'll see someone standing on the, you know, um, guardrails as if they're going to jump. Sometimes they'll just see someone like on the side of the road as they pass by and, and out of concern, they turn around to go pick them up and they're gone. So it's it's not abnormal for for spirits to haunt uh, hmm. roads and roadways. Yeah. But still interesting. And especially. Well, and, the 20 year. Uh, <laughs> right. The, the twist there. Um, and I think you're right too about it being a fresher spirit because it was able to have such a tangible um, yeah. dump on the hood right. um, that you were all able to see and hear it uh, is from what I gathered. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty. And it's possible seeing it again was because of your very familiar energy to it. Right. You know, if it showed itself to you once, then maybe it feels comfortable showing itself to you again and probably in hopes of being identified. Right. Yeah, try to get a little bit more of that energy to maybe boost it, keep it around. Right. Um, but it can feel itself fading. Exactly. But super cool stories. And thank you all yeah. so much for sending so those much. in. We actually have uh, time for the comment of the week. Uh, this is a comment from uh, on YouTube. Uh, Brandy S.8. To seven, I think she might be a pair of junkie, um, <clears throat> and she uh, she commented on doppelganger horror lore and aggressive mimicry in the paranormal. We did that um, few million episodes back, yeah. uh, <laughs> and she said, "I have got to do better about getting to YouTube and watching the actual podcast. I am literally driving." And listening to the podcast on Spotify, and I'm on the same episode, and I swear that Chris is reading my mind. Um, You're reading yes, Randy's mind. Yes, you are. I was thinking about the man in the Iron Mask, and as soon as I thought, as soon as I thought it, he said it. I'm not going to lie. This book, the way he describes it, sounds like something I. Uh, to have seen before, but I was very young and I believe the book scared the crap out of me and I did not read it. I was uh, not in Italy as a child, so I don't know anything about that base or their library. Um, I think it was Germany. Was it Italy or yeah, Germany? It was Italy. Okay, it was Italy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just know that I too am going to be joining TikTok on the search for that book. I do remember uh, Time Life having those creepy books. They were black. And I remember mm -hmm. the commercial coming on late at night with the creepy music. And it was a set of books. Uh, the hell are these crazy, creepy stuff going on on them? Uh, but I do not believe that the books were Time Life books either. Hmm. That's uh, interesting. Another thought. It's some Mandela effect. Yeah. Right. Well, she, yeah. Um, uh, another thought did cross my mind as well. And the thought was that maybe the Mandela effect had stolen the book from, you guys are reading each other's mind, oh, wow. stolen uh, that book from us and we'll never see it again. You know, it's this book uh, and it has plagued me most of my life. Um, I think about how often I've run across things that I'll never see again. And, and how very difficult it is because we live in a world where we think it's just as easy as, mm -hmm. as, as sitting down at the computer and looking something up. But the truth of the matter is 
independent publishing houses, you know, small press houses, uh, vanity press where people would, you know, pay to publish things themselves. Um, all those things, there, there's countless uh, publications that we probably will never see or set our eyes on. So, um, because there's plenty of famous books that I'm looking for actively that, you know, many people know about, but they're just hard to get your hands on. Mm -hmm. It's true. Um, so that's a that's a good comment of the week for sure. Yeah. Um, but if you have a ghost story that you want to send us, you can send it to ghostmail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. Uh, that is the best way to make sure that we get our eyes on it, uh, especially because on TikTok, we'll, we'll sometimes get them on TikTok and it is very confusing for me to go through all of the message requests and things like that. So it might get missed uh, if you don't email it. So uh, if you want to send it there, that's the best way to do it. Uh, also, if you have questions that you want us to answer, things like that, you can also send it to ghost mail. Uh, but with that, my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. That's Patrick. That's Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> and stay spooky, y'all. <laughs>